नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द सेशन ऑफ क्वालिटी ऑफ इंडिया माय सेल्फ आर एन विश्वकर्मा एंड इन दिस प्रोग्राम वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सप्लोर आई ए टी एन सिक्स नाइन फोर नाइन विच इज क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम फॉर ऑटोमोटिव इंडस्ट्रीज सो वेन यू टॉक अबाउट आई ए टी एफ द बेस्ट स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ आई ए टी एन सिक्स नाइन फोर नाइन इज आई एस ओ नाइन थाउजेंड वन सो आई एस ओ नाइन थाउजेंड वन द लेटेस्ट वर्जन विच इज टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन वर्जन इट कवर्स ऑलमोस्ट अराउंड सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द कंटेंट of uh, the entire standard of iit 16949 that means if you want to implement and get certified to iit 16949 you need to first comply with uh, the requirement of 9001 which covers 70% of the uh, contents uh, approximately rest are exclusive requirement to the automotive industry 9001 is a general quality management system standard so first you have to fulfill all the generic requirements then specific pertaining to the automotive industry there are around 30% of the additional requirements okay those needs to be complied with that is how you need to implement iit 16949 so you can see here uh, 9001 was published in 2015 and just after one year 2016 had been released and this is the current version only the latest version in fact there are uh, doubts in the mind of some of the professional that uh, there are changes in iit 16949 yes there are some updates which keep on happening and those are being uh, put in a standard or in a document called uh, sanction interpretation so i've already made a small video on sanction interpretation what exactly uh, sanction interpretation so to know about sanction interpretation and whatever are the minor updation which keep on happening or clarification more of a updation than clarifications are there in uh, this uh, sanction interpretation i think most of the contents are pertaining to the auditors for them it is helpful to understand various requirements and uh, various auditing complexities are explained and how to uh, fulfill all the requirement some of them are pertaining to the companies uh, which is implementing so my request would be to go through that video of uh, sanction interpretation and you will find the video in uh, the video gallery so friend this is a small video just to appraise you about the basic level of requirements of iitf 16949 we cannot cover everything uh, for a small video uh, for you to we have detailed course on awareness and uh, for qualified internal auditor if you want to explore the uh, detailed course online course you can access the course from uh, at the convenience of your home and uh, you can learn the subject and you can get certified also to know about the detailed process of uh, getting certified to iit 16949 internal auditor program you can visit our website www.qualitybinder.com or you can visit to our uh, course portal that is courses.qualitybinder.com or you can download quality of india's app also from android store or io store now let's proceed and explore iit 16949 in a broader sense so friends when we talk about iit 16949 and its clauses clauses are the same likewise 9001 9001 uh, has a total 10 clauses so uh, iit also has a uh, 10 clauses only but the important point to note over here is that in almost all the clauses there would be supplemental requirements which means that you have to first comply with all the generic requirement given uh, in 9001 and then there are some additional requirement in each and every uh, clauses so you need to go through that you need to understand them and you need to comply with those requirement to be certified to iit 16949 so if you talk about clauses introduction scope normative reference and terms and definition these are the common clauses and these are called non auditable clauses whereas the auditable clauses starting from clause number 4 that is context of the organization leadership then planning support operation performance evolution and improvement so these seven clauses are called auditable clauses so the auditor who will be visiting to your uh, organization the third party auditor they are going to basically cover all these clauses for certification program and iit 16949 is also based on pdsa cycle that is plan do check and act so clause number 4 5 6 and 7 this is part of uh, planning phase clause number 8 is do phase that is execution and that is the biggest clause we have clause number 9 is all about performance evolution so all those uh, uh, evolution that is uh, process audit product audit then internal audit are part of your check phase that is clause number 9 and finally we have clause number 10 that is improvement so continual improvement the part of clause number 10 uh, so this is pdsa cycle uh, as we know that this is developed by Dr. Edward Deming. Now talking about the scope of IIT 16949, so this applies to any organization who are into design and development of any product into the value chain of uh, the automotive industry, 
or into production or into assembly, installation or services of any automotive related products. If they are also manufacturing any products with embedded software, then also it applies to them. And this is also applies to uh, the organization uh, who are manufacturing customer specified production parts or service parts or any accessory parts. Okay. So, if you are into uh, any of this kind of manufacturing or uh, service industry, which is catering to any of these elements, uh, then IIT applies to you. And this IIT standard can be applied to uh, throughout the automotive supply chain. Now, talking about the revision in IIT 16949, uh, this is the latest version, which is IATF 16949, based on the generic quality management system standard, that is 9001. But prior to that, the automotive industry's quality management system standard was known as ISO TS 16949 and there has been couple of revisions also. First of all, this got published in the year 1999, okay, uh, ISO TS. This was never a standard. This was called technical specification, okay. And this was based on 9001, 1994 version. And the first revision or second edition was published in 2002 and the base standard was 9001, 2000. And the third edition or second revision came in uh, 2009, which was based on 2008 version of 9001. So, these are all older version and the latest version is IATA 16949 and this is a standard. So, prior to IATA 16949, we were using only one standard. So, in the same standard, we had IS 9001 content as well as ISO TS content. But now, we have to refer two standards. One is the generic standard that is 9001. The other one is IATF. So, both the standards are separate. You have to buy both the standards, understand and comply with. Now, talking about the goal of IATF 16949, it has three goals. The first one is continual improvement. Second one is defect prevention. And third one talks about reduction of variation and waste in supply chain. So, the organization which is implementing IATF 16949, they have to make continual improvement in their processes and practices. They have to do Defect prevention. So, prevention is the motto over here. The focus is on prevention rather than doing uh, corrective action. It does not mean that you should not be doing corrective action, but focus should be defining, designing a good system which will be preventing defect. Okay. And then reduction of variation and waste in supply chain. So, indirectly, this talks about uh, Six Sigma and lean aspects. So, the organization should be also practicing those things for reduction in variation and waste in supply chain. Now, let us move forward with the clauses and the first clause is clause number 4, which is context of the organization. So, the organization over here needs to identify the purpose of the organization and we have 4 clauses over here or sub clauses rather. 4.1 talks about understanding the context. So, you need to understand the purpose of the organization, you need to identify the uh, needs and expectation of all the interested parties okay. and then scope of your systems certification needs to be identified. And 4.4 talks about quality management system. So, here we have some additional requirements also. So, in 4.3.1 of IIT 16949, it talks about permitted exclusion. And in the exclusion, you can only exclude product design. Process design cannot be excluded. In 4.4.1.2, it talks about having a documented system or rather having a procedure for product safety. The next one is clause number 5, which talks about leadership. So, the leadership has uh, three sub clauses, 5.1 talks about leadership and commitment, then policy and then we have organization role, responsibility and authority. So, this all talks about uh, the roles and responsibility of the top management or the leadership. So, the leadership needs to play a vital role and it talks about lot many areas which the organization needs to ensure or rather the top management needs to ensure to show that they are really committed. 5.1.1.1 talks about corporate responsibility. Uh, this is an exclusive requirement of IATF and it talks about having additional three policies, which is anti-bribery policy, employee code of conduct and ethics escalation policy, which is also called whistleblowing policy. 5.1.1.3, this is also an exclusive requirement of IATF. This talks about identification of process owners and 5.3.2 talks about Defining responsibility and authority for product requirements. So, somebody needs to be authorized for stop shipment. This is an exclusive requirement for IIT 16949. Clause number 6 talks about planning and in planning we have 3 sub clauses. So, action to address risk and opportunities 
quality objectives and planning to achieve them. So, the objectives pertain to different functions and department needs to be identified and change management is also part of clause number 6. So, whatever needs and expectations we have identified in clause number 4, now pertaining to them, we need to identify the risk also and the standard also talks about identifying the methods and criteria for risk assessment. There is some additional uh, requirement in 6.1.2.1 of uh, IIT 169.49 pertaining to risk analysis. 6.1.2.3, this is an exclusive requirement in IIT 169.49 which talks about contingency plan. I have already made an exclusive video on this, uh, if you talk about the YouTube videos, but in our courses we have a detailed module on contingency plan with detailed uh, examples and case studies. So, in the contingency plan you should be having a notification process and you should be periodically evaluating also the effectiveness of your contingency plan and you should be reviewing it also. Clause number 7 talks about support and here we have 5 sub clauses, 7.1 talks about uh, resources, so various kinds of resources the organization should be having like infrastructure, manpower, tool tackles, everything and then people working in the organization they should be also competent enough to execute their activities uh, effectively, they should be aware about also various activities and communication you should be managing both internal and external communication, so there are sub clauses in communication. There are sub clauses in in fact uh, almost all the sub clauses ok. 7.5 is very much important, this talks about documented information. So, the document management is being described in 7.5. Talking about 7.1, we have an exclusive requirement in IIT 169.49 which talks about plant facility and equipment planning. And in 7.1.5, we have some exclusive requirement in IIT 169.49 which talks about Measurement system analysis that is MSA, so MSA should be carried out by the organization. Then calibration and verification, this is also a requirement, mandatory requirement and then laboratory management. So, these three are exclusive requirement as far as IET which is concerned, but we have other requirements from 9001. So, I am not much focusing on 9001 because I have already made a small video for you too on 9001, so it should be going through that. Okay, right now we are focusing more into the IETF elements. And in MSI that is 7.1.5.1.1 talks about having records of customer acceptance of alternative methods. If at all you are using any alternative method, you should be having records. It is a SAL requirement. So, wherever in the standard it talks about a SAL requirement which means it is a mandatory requirement. If you do not comply to any SAL requirement, you are liable for a non-compliant. And wherever in the standard it talks about retaining something which is basically talking about retaining the records. So, it means that the standard is asking you to keep the records handy as an evidence of compliance. In 7.2.3 talks about internal auditor competency. So, very exclusively IETF talks about internal auditor competency which is not there in 9001. 9001 gives very generic requirement, but in IIT 169.49 it talks about very detailed requirement for an internal auditor, ok. I am not going to discuss about the detail uh, part of uh, the requirements. If you want to explore all these requirements of IIT 169.49 in more details and you want to become a qualified internal auditor, my request would be to opt for our detailed course. And in 7.2.4 it talks about second party auditor competency that is supplier requirement, supplier auditor requirement. So, so many requirements are there in supplier auditors and in 7.5.1.1 it talks about documented information, so how your the documentation should look like, uh, it talks about that and it also talks about having a quality manual. So, having a quality manual, it is not a monetary requirement for 9001, but if you are uh, uh, applying for IIT 16949, then it is a monetary requirement and there are uh, requirements pertaining to how to manage documents, how to keep records, how to do identification and control of document information. So, all those requirements are there in this clause. Clause number 8 talks about uh, operations which is the biggest clause and here we have so many sub clauses you can see 7 sub clauses, 8.1 talks about operational planning and control, so how to plan for your operation. Operation means for example you are doing some assembly or you are doing some stamping or forging or casting or painting, whatever activity you are doing, so it is all about managing the, the main show that is operation. Okay. So, operational planning and control 8.1, requirement of products and services 8.2, then your design and development of products and services 
Edwin Ford talks about supplier management or control of externally provided production processes. So, all about supplier development, supplier assessment, supplier rating, supplier control. So, everything is there in 8.4. 8.5 talks about production and service provision. 8.6 talks about release of production services. So, various criteria and requirement of releasing the products. Okay. And then 8.7 talks about if there are some non conformity happening or observed in the processes, okay, how to manage them? 8.7. 8.2.1.1, this is an exclusive requirement from IIT 16949. This talks about establishing customer communication system for all the written and verbal communication. 8.2.3.1.1 talks about review of the requirement for product and services. You can see here, it says supplemental. So, wherever in the standard it talks about supplemental requirement which means these are the requirement exclusively on IIT 16949. So, it says over here retain documented evidence of customer authorized waiver. So, any deviation you are getting from customer okay you should be keeping documented evidence of that. 8.3.2.1 talks about design and development planning. It is a supplemental requirement from IITF and it is asking you to follow a cross function team or multidisciplinary approach. In fact, you should be using multidisciplinary or cross function team approach for advanced product quality planning that is APQP and in the APQP you should be uh, making or developing control plans for that also uh, cross function team is recommended for all the activities of PPAP. Again, you need to follow a cross function team approach or multidisciplinary approach. Okay. For SPC also normally uh, various department would be engaged or various agency would be engaged collecting data plotting control charts and then uh, assessing the capability. So, so many stakeholders are involved. So, mostly talking about uh, the product development or APQP or PPAB activities and in fact all the documents you should be following multidisciplinary approach. And in IIT 16949 it also talks about DFM and DFA. If you know about DFM and DFA please write down in the comment section. Or if you want me to make a video on DFM and DFA, then also you can comment. 8.3.3.3 talks exclusively about special characteristics. These are the critical characteristics. So, how to control them? Exclusive requirement from IIT 16949. So, normally you should be using SPC for all the special characteristics. Okay. And you should be having a symbol conversion table. If you know about symbol conversion table, then also please comment. And the symbol conversion table shall be submitted to the customer if it is needed by the customer. So, in IIT 16949 in clause number 8.4, there are some supplemental requirement pertain to supplier management like in 8.4.1.2 it talks about supplier selection process. So, there are so many exclusive requirement in supplier selection process and all these elements to be covered in your uh, normally the checklist which is used for supplier assessment, all these points should be covered. So, these are all the exclusive requirement from IAT 16949. 8.4.2 talks about type and extent of control. So, how to control your suppliers? It is all about that. This is 9001's requirement and talking about IATF again, it has some supplemental requirement from IATF. Okay, you should be having a documented process. It is a SAL requirement, mandatory requirement to have a documented process if you are IATF compliant organization. Okay. And then supplier quality management system development you should be having. This is a requirement from IATF only. And then again supplier development, how the development should be done. Normally how the development is done. First of all, the basic system should be put in place uh, at the supplier end. Then you should be pushing the supplier or facilitating the supplier to go for 9001 certification. And once they are compliant to 9001, then you should facilitate for IATF. So, in three phases, you should be developing your supplier. This is what the recommendation from IATF 16949. Then 8.4.2.4, IATF talks about supplier monitoring. Again, an exclusive requirement from IATF 16949 and so many requirements are there. Okay, we are not going to go to the details. As I told you, it is a very broad level of session. 8.4.2.4.1, second party audit, that means supplier audit. Second party audits are audits done between customer and the supplier having business relationship. Okay. So, if you are going to uh, go to your supplier end for assessing your supplier system audit, product audit, process audit, this all would be called second party audit. So, how to do second party audits? 
those things are recommended in 8.4.2.4.1 and 8.4.2.5 talks about supplier development program this is again an exclusive requirement 8.5.1.1 talks about control plan again IATF requirement okay so at quality of India we use uh, this uh, yellow color band just for the identification so wherever you are seeing yellow color band which means those are exclusive requirement from IIT 16949 okay wherever we have blue color band that is basically generic requirement from 9001 so so many requirements are there pertain to control plan and as we know that uh, in 2024 on the 1st of March 2024 we have an exclusive separate manual of control plan first edition and the APQP has also gone through some changes uh, now it has third revision with some additional requirements so if you want to learn about APQP latest version control plan in fact the six core tool we have an exclusive very detailed course on six core tool you must explore that because the core tools are the foundation for any quality management system and quality of India's core tool course is the best in the business you won't find anywhere such detailed elaboration case studies and examples like we have at quality of India 8.5.1.5 Again, it's a new requirement. It talks about TPM. Now coming to clause number nine, which is a check phase of PDCA. This talks about performance evolution. And over here, we have three sub clauses in 9001 or in IATF, uh, both the standards. 9.1 talks about uh, monitoring, measurement, analysis, and evolution, all the generic requirements. So uh, whatever processes and practices you are having within your organization, in fact, all the department and function, they should be monitoring and measuring all their processes okay and whatever data they are going to get they should be analyzing evaluating if they are fulfilling the requirement achieving the targets or not if there are gaps they should be assessing the gaps and initiating action so 9.1 all about that okay 9.2 talks about process of internal audits and management review so in internal audit in IIT there are some exclusive requirements for an example, process audit, that is manufacturing process audit and product audit as well, which is not a requirement in 9001. 9.1.1.2, 9.1.1.3 talks about statistical tool and statistical concept. So use of various statistical uh, tools based on the risk, okay, how that should be used. It's all about that exclusive requirement from IATF, very important to comply. So 9.2.2.3 talks about manufacturing process audit and here it is um, asking the organization to have at least three years calendar for manufacturing process audit. And in certain cases, if you are supplying to any German companies, okay, they might ask for VDA 6.3, which is a very comprehensive process audit system, okay, much beyond whatever is the requirement from IAT 16949. In fact, if you are not supplying to a German automotive company, then also you should be exploring VDA 6.3, which is very comprehensive, very detailed process audit program. Quality of India, we impart training program on VDA 6.3. You can uh, contact us. In fact, we have an exclusive online uh, course also on VDA 6.3 process audit. The 9.2.2.4 talks about product audit. So this is also an exclusive requirement from IIT 16949. 9.3 talks about management review that is management review meeting which is called generally this is a general requirement from 9001 but in IIT 16949 it has some supplemental requirement and it is asking the organization at least annually you should be conducting your MRM. Now clause number 10 talks about improvement which is the last clause here we have three sub clauses 10.1 talks about general requirement. 10.2 talks about non-conformity and corrective action. 10.3 talks about continual improvement. So we have some exclusive requirement over here. 10.2.3 talks about problem solving and IIT is asking the organization to have a documented process. So indirectly it is asking about having a procedure. And 10.2.4 talks about having a procedure or a system for error proofing or POKIOK which is called uh, normally in industry. And 10.2.6 talks about customer complaint handling and field failure test analysis. This is also an exclusive requirement from IIT 16949. And finally, we should be having continual improvement 10.3, which is a general requirement from 9001. So friends, this is all about IIT 16949. I hope I have clarified the things in a broader sense. This is a very broad level of program to make you understand on IIT 16949. 
again i would be requesting you if you want to become a qualified internal auditor for it 16949 you must opt for our online course you can download quality of india's app from android store or ios store we also do physical training program at uh, our uh, corporate clients so if you want a training program at your company you can also contact us and for detail about our services you can also visit our website www.qualityofindia.com so friends see you in next video take care jai hind